today on the update, we take a look at Ghana's housing system and an in-depth look into child labor. Hello and welcome, my name is Godwin Nambo. Since Ghana's independence, a provision of housing remains essential to the development agenda. Various policies and institutions have sought to address issues such as a land tenure, land title regulation, and the provision of affordable housing units to the working population. However, a number of these housing strategies have been negatively affected by lack of funds, poor macroeconomic environment, and a lack of participation from the private sector. As a result, Ghana's housing industry has remained primitive. According to the Ghana National Policy and Action Plan 1987 to 1990, Ghana housing is set to be at a crisis level. Nkrumah, after independence, formulated a three development plan to make adequate provision for housing. He commenced with a five year plan from 1951 to 1956, among which the Tema Development Corporation TDC and State Housing Corporation SHC form a part of. The idea was centered on creating affordable housing for minimum wage receivers. Other divisions set up to create more housing proved futile due to inadequate funds. Apparently, the roof loan scheme under the recommendation of the United States gave out funds for the settlement. It led to the establishment of 2,517 units out of the 6,700 proposed. The second development plan was aimed at providing house loans to employees but was short-lived and ousted shortly after. In 1990, the World Bank, in conjunction with the United Nations Development Program, reinforced an assessment study in a futuristic housing sector reform plan and policy. Two years after the studies, it opened doors to new ideas, which included the use of micro-concrete roofing tiles. This initiative was to reduce the dependency on foreign building materials. Due to the ever-rising cost of building materials, real estate developers found it very difficult to finance their projects. They set off on a different strategy to make money, thus targeting expatriates and foreigners to purchase their buildings. The high importation and over-reliance on foreign materials led to the collapse of local production. Ghana's financial crisis in 1999 put a halt to the SNIT operations on social renting units. Ghanaians were unable to afford even at reduced housing prices, hence creating a major loss. In the 2000s, after Ghana had been declared a highly indebted poor country, it received 10 million CDs for the development of new housing projects near Amazaman. Today, most Ghanaians that have little funds have joined the act of setting up structures that are barely equipped and charge outrageously for it. There are many types of housing in Ghana. These include the traditional houses that date back to the 10th century made out of mainly red mat and palm fronds which exist till date in extremely remote rural areas. Wooden houses hosted in slums due to rural urban migration and houses constructed from cement. Today in Ghana, most houses are built independently for personal or commercial use. They come in the form of apartments, semi-detached houses, detached houses, and attached residence or townhouses. On the other hand, there is a section of real estate companies dedicated to selling houses or mortgaging them but at expensive charges. However, the government of Ghana is pursuing various housing projects through private-public partnerships. Child labor in Africa has been noted to be the worst form of human rights infringement. Three out of ten children are employed against their will to engage in all forms of perilous occupations. The eastern, western and southern regions in Africa have been reported to have the highest rate of child labor. Ghana in this regard is no exception. On the update today, we've decided to shine more light on issues concerning child labor in Ghana and its effects on our society. The International Labor Organization, ILO, defines child labor as work that deprives children of their childhood, potential and dignity that tends to harm their physical and mental development as a result. According to global estimates of child labor, one-fifth of most African children are involved in child labor, a proportion more than twice as high as in any other region. Children between the ages of 5 and 15 engage in hazardous work for survival as a result of poverty. Child labor is not only represented by mining activities, farming or hawking, rather slavery, shoplifting, sexual exploitation, 
debt bondage, drug trafficking, among many others, form an integral part of child labor that are imposed by adults. Ghana, through the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection, passed the Children's Act in 1998 to protect and improve the welfare of children. Section 91 of this Act lays particular emphasis on the exploitative nature of labor if it denies a child access to education, health and safety. It also added that the minimum legal age for a person to work in a hazardous place is 18. However, no implementation method or enforcement policies were included. Several factors can be accounted for as causes of child labor. Studies have shown that poverty in the homes of children may force them to work in order to support their families. Children are found working at mining sites, factories, construction sites, markets, beaches, farms and many other places for a very low income while putting their lives at risk and depriving them of education. Huge demand for unskilled labor is also another factor to look at. Since children are unskilled and yet provide cheap source of labor, many employers take advantage of their vulnerability to exploit their limited energies. In a bid to increase margin or profits, some employers have no second thought about employing children even if it is at the expense of business ethics. In a society where the illiterates are a majority, child labor is a rampant norm. Children should be able to choose what they want to become through schooling and guidance. A duty also meant to be carried out by parents, teachers, guidance and religious leaders. However, if a child is uneducated, the ability to choose between a good and dangerous occupation is lost. Talking about illiteracy, the high cost of education in Ghana forces many parents to make their children drop out of school to work. Previous governments sought to eradicate this national issue by introducing the free education policy and school feeding project, but some head teachers and teachers managed to squeeze out monies from students disregarding the Ghana Education Service. Parents who live in abject poverty have no other option than to make the young children work as unskilled laborers, hence bringing their education to an abrupt halt. Among these factors are effects that come about as a result of intensive child labor on the child and the society as a whole. To the child, he or she is exposed to many health complications due to the harsh conditions under which they work. Since some employers entertain children to work for them, medical checks and reports are not submitted regularly. In mining companies and factories where children are exposed to chemicals and workplaces that demand manual works, lifetime health issues are inevitable. The child also loses quality childhood experiences. Humans are to enjoy every stage of their growth and in this regard, children are expected to have good childhood memories for a lifetime. Children are expected to play with peers, embark on school trips, have birthday parties among others. The society also encounters a high level of illiteracy. Children that are forced to engage in various occupations are denied the right to school and as a result, the rate of illiteracy keeps increasing in the society. Education is meant to prepare individuals for the task ahead and as a result, educated people are equipped with the tact to handle issues. The uneducated, however, usually rely on force as a means of survival. The society gets flattered with money-thirsty youth. The sole aim of working is to earn money. Children as young as six are indirectly introduced to the habit of hunting for money when they are made to work and unconsciously, the need for money gets implanted in their heads. Their individual values and respect for talent gets lost as a result since they end up believing that money can be easily acquired when they engage in almost any kind of job. Indeed, there's a brighter side to everything. If education is made free or less expensive, child labor could be eliminated. If demand for skilled or professional workers becomes the norm, child labor can be eliminated. If law enforcers will play their active roles by arresting people who force children into hard labor, the rate of child labor can be limited. The innocence of a child should not be taken away in an exchange for making life easier for adults. We should all strive to protect the fundamental rights of children. This has been the update here on DGN. My name is Godwin Nambo. Follow us for more news at dailyguideafrica.com and on all our social media platforms at Daily Guide Network.